154 in the morning Monday. Uh, 154 in the morning uh, West Coast time. It's the 26th of August. These are two four. Oh, griping and grumbling. We were just here. Rosemary, California. Sleep deprived as usual. And grumbling about uh, Boeing's decision and NASA's decision sticking two astronauts past New Year's. It's August. August. September. October. November. December. January. February. If I wasn't counting this month, I'd say about six months in the in a International Space Station for this. Are they fucking kidding me? Well, they can't make any. They can't make any. Um, can't make any deals with Elon Musk at this point, who's got SpaceX being their sole transportation back to the International Space Station, unless, of course, they really want to work with the Russians at this point and get the two astronauts out. And we'd still be owing Russia on that one. If they were so kind enough for doing it. But they're not, well, we still got a couple of astronauts stuck up there. Starliner, several months ago, actually, about a few, couple of months ago, was trying to make uh, their maiden voyage on their ship. Now, they could at least set the damn thing up without crew and did orbitals. I mean, they had testing back in the 60s when we actually had government-sponsored companies out there. Government spent taxpayer money on these huge aerospace companies out there who were developing spacecraft. And one of them dealt with the craft of... Uh, Mercury, Apollo, and then after that there was another company uh, dealt with uh, and it was Rockwell for the space capsule, but after that uh, hold on, pause, 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 pause okay, it was the McDonald Aircraft Corporation <laughs> primary contractor for the Project Mercury capsules and also built a Gemini capsule They tested unmanned ships up there. But they also put mancraft as soon as they figured out that there was no issues with it. But regarding the Apollo. Apollo was done by the Grumman Aircraft Corporation or Northrop Grumman. Northrop Grumman. Back then, they took the time to test these things out. What is it with the aircraft company these days? Boeing spends billions of dollars on a damn craft that doesn't work. They could have been testing it out in space, just popping off maybe one or two ships out there just to get some information online. One other company did a shot around the, around the globe, actually around the moon, to get information whether or not if it's going to be usable or not to put man out there towards the moon again and back again. We had the information a long time ago, back in the 1960s and the 1970s. We lost all that data? All that engineering data? All that engineering? Holy crap. It's the one I got no respect for. It's I'm losing respect for Boeing at this point for not thinking about this crap. They must have talked about the about the old space programs back then, what they had back then, compared to now. They had to have done the research on that one. And they had new engineering technologies, yes. But did they ever thought about just, you know, constantly testing it on Earth, but then one or two craft testing it out in space without crew to see if it works on the automatics? If they can actually do it automatically. Or did it need actual people to do it? But this was the test for it. And it found out they've got problems with the thruster units. So now, they don't want to risk putting two astronauts on here and dying in space. I can understand that. But what I couldn't understand is how come they couldn't get 
Elon Musk to help save these people? This could have been a publicity stunt. Actually, this could have been a publicity uh, situation for him to, to capitalize on. I swear these guys don't know their ass from Hot Rock. I'm sorry to say. And yes, when we had the space program, we had astronauts training like crazy for something that no one ever actually had experience in, and they were trying to get all the experience necessary. They trained on T-38 trainers, high-speed aircraft, trying to simulate G-forces, uh, G despite the fact they had a spinning centrifuge that they could put the pressure on a human, be human body. We're still talking about putting, your, putting yourself in a rocket that's going to be s screaming halfway through the atmosphere here. At supersonic speeds, putting a hell of a lot of pressure and stress on the human body. How they're going to be able to deal with the tights and turns and everything else going on? How's that for maneuvering? Well, I don't know. I'm not an engineer, and I'm definitely not a pilot. But that's what they needed to do. But what they still need to do to get the astronauts out of there is send a damn capsule up there to get them and put them back in there and. Get it back down. Problem is, they weren't trained on SpaceX. The Starliner, if I'm not mistaken, if I understand some of the stuff that they actually put out there for public press, is they still kept the backups like the Apollo and other spacecraft had manual. See, the difference between SpaceX and Boeing's control panels is manual control Boeing has. SpaceX has a computer operated. Touch pads. We can do touch pads on this damn thing. Not hands held on a stick. And controlling the maneuvering thrusters. I miss those glory days. We're not doing everything else by a damn computer screen. And what happens if the damn screen goes out? Well, we got bad guys on that one. What happens if the screen breaks? Well, it's not that breakable. Let me break on that one. But yes, even the mechanics, they still had to test physically just to make sure that the controls were working and that they were controlling the thrusters adequately. Kept checking the lines left and right. It's probably no wonder they actually had more issues with the space shuttle because of the manual and automatic when you're coming in, it was it was not automatic. It was manual, if I understood it correctly. And they had the practice on the simulators a great deal. They still had to test it out, which cost millions of dollars, to put the aircraft on a 747, fly it up in the fly it up to a point, and then drop it and watch the thing go wee. But they had to make sure that the aircraft was working in every portion of it. The thing that was giving them more and more issues with the aircraft, actually with the spacecraft of the, of the space shuttle, the STS system, they called it. Space transportation system. Is the heat tiles. The tiles had a tendency of ripping off. That much force, that much pressure on them. And they had to make sure that they were precise. They had to make sure that they were on there securely. I mean, royally securely on the damn things. Because once you get a crack, once you get one tile exposing hot gases, Columbia. Columbia. There was a zipper effect on that one. They lost several tiles on that Columbia ship going up in space. They took the chance. They gambled wrong. That's just never lived it down. Any failure like that, they've never lived down because they always want to make sure that they're safe. Sometimes on the border of being paranoid about it. I don't blame them. I would too. I would too. But would it still behoove the musk? Of saying, yes, we will take these guys home earlier. 
if they could clear it with the federal transportation on this one and get at least two guys crewed in a ship to go up there to bring the other astronauts back home, is that going to cost them much? Is that going to be costing the taxpayers that much money? Or his company that much money? Or is it the prestige of it? Having them stuck in space like that for over six months? Or longer than that? This is not what they signed up for. But being a test pilot, you have to be going through things. So I hope they're all right. Will the program work? I hope, I hope, I hope it does. Because it takes a long time to get the spacecraft developed to a point where they're going to be used on a constant basis, but they still need maintenance left and right. The one thing I understand about science fiction writers these days, they kept talking to other people, kept thinking about ideas, but they talked to people in, in the industries, what they thought of the engineering structure, one thing or another. I mean, we could draw the ships and we could, we could sail off in the sky for them and we could do the special effects, but when it comes down for the actual, the actual spacecraft, test, test, test to make sure that it runs, that it's not going to fall apart, that it's not going to shake apart, that it's not going to go up in a fireball or come back to Earth as a fireball or pieces of it. We try to show how marvelous flying through space is. We keep try trying to show how vast the cosmos is and how beautiful it is. We haven't showed the deadly dangers of the damn thing in the first place. Cosmic radiation outside coming from the sun, from the sun or from radiation still out there beyond the sun or any radiation still lingering around the Earth. We're also dealing with particles flying at ballistics at, at faster than anything they've charted. Not large pieces. I mean, the large pieces they can try to getting a radar fix and radar images. But I'm talking about micrometeors. I'm talking about little particles flying through space with no way of stopping except. To plow ahead and to do damage. That's the thing that scares the hell out of me every time I keep seeing the astronauts going through a spacewalk. They gotta have enough bravery out there and hopefully enough layers that if anything happens to penetrate their suit, they're dead. But this is the risk of flying through space. The suits have to be tough enough to deal with that kind of impact. Not to mention dealing with the heat and the cold out there. A lot of testing, a lot of material for it. That being said, concerning about space flight, this camper is going back to bed to see if I can fly through the sea of space in my head. See if I can get some sleep at this point.